Hello and welcome back in this session about for loops. So for loops are one of the most important and most heavily used concepts in programming. And uh, before we learned about lists and lists are containers of many other objects. So like a backpack where you put in things like a sandwich or a bottle of water or an extra t-shirt before you go hiking. And uh, now let's assume that it's raining and your backpack and all elements uh, get wet. And what you are typically do, you unpack each element and take an action on it. So in this case, you are drying each element in the sun. And uh, yeah, this is called an element-wise operation. But uh, earlier we learned that, however, element-wise operation is uh, not a standard behavior of lists. So let's create a list uh, with four elements, one, two, three, four. And now our intention is to multiply each element by two. So an element-wise operation, but you already know if we just put L times two, we get a multiple of the list itself. So actually we created two copies of L and then we concatenated it, but we didn't get an element-wise operation. But now what should we do if we want to have an element-wise operation? And there um, the for keyword comes into place. So we are saying for J in list. So we can also say for element in list. We can name the each element of the list um, with the name we want. We can say element or I or J and that's not important. So we can say for element, for each element in list, and then we have to make a colon. And if you print the, and if you press return, then we automatically Python makes here an indent. And then we say print the element. So we can see here we iterated over all elements and we printed all elements. So we get one, two, three, four. And of course, we can do more than just printing. We can say, okay, each element we want to multiply by two and then print it. We can also do that. And also we can say that we name each element i, multiply each i by two, and then rename the multiplied element as j and then print j. So we get here the same result, of course. And before we learned uh, the function length, so with uh, the function length, we can determine the amount of elements in a list. We can replicate this process by a few lines of code. So we can say count equals zero and for element or for under slash in list, please increase my count. So in count is four. So we just determined the length of our list L for elements. So again, I want, wanted to highlight two things. So you need the colon here. So it's uh, the same with an if statement. If you forget the colon, we get an error message. And we need uh, the indent here. So if you forget the indent, we also got an error message. So this is here the right structure. So before I said we can iterate over all iterables. So iterables are objects that contain many elements. And also we learned that a string also is a container of many elements. So for example, the string dog contains three characters, D, O, and G. And uh, let's create the variable D equals dog. And then we can also iterate over D and print all single element, D, O, G. And we can also print each uh, character as an upper character. So we can say for each character in D, please print me the upper character. And we get DOG. And we can also determine the length of our string. And of course, it's uh, three. At this point, I want to introduce the range object. And the range object is also an iterable. So we can iterate over all elements. And in this example, uh, the range object stores integers from one including until five excluding. So and if you run the cell, we only get here the range object from one to five. And we can also check the type of the range object. It's a range object. And when I say the range object stores in the elements, it's yeah actually not really storing it. It just makes itself ready to give me all elements if I explicitly want to have them. So I can explicitly call the range object by creating a list. And then the list is containing all four elements of our range object. We can also iterate over a range object. So same with the list. So we can say for e in range one to five, please print me all elements. And we get uh, one, two, three, four. So the last element excluding. So from one including till five excluding. 
And this is actually the same behavior as with the list. So before we had our list uh, one, two, three, four, and we iterated over it and we got um, yeah all elements. So what's uh, the difference to a list? Well, a list uh, once created, uh, it stores all elements of the list at the same time. And of course we can iterate over all elements, but with the range object, a range object never stores all elements of it at the same time. So we can iterate element-wise over all elements of the range object and Python internally stores only the actual element. So we iterate over one element, do something with uh, this element, and after we are finished and want to go to the next element, then Python drops out our actual element and takes it off, out of memory and then takes the next element. So Python never stores more than one element at the same time with a range object. And uh, yeah, that's quite memory efficient. So if you assume we, we don't have an element or a range object with four elements, but with one million elements, so it makes a difference. If we, we store one million elements or only one, one element, all right, so let's go on with the range object. And of course we can create five iterations. So we can say for E in range uh, five and five stands for the last element. So excluding by default, our starting element is zero. So here we get all elements from one till four. And we can also do it explicitly. We can say we want a range object from uh, zero, including till 10 excluding, but only every third element. So we can also define this one here. And there we get uh, 0, 3, 6 and 9. And of course we can do more than just printing. We can for example multiply each uh, element in our range object and print it out. And there we get all multiplied elements from 1 till 10 including. And let's go to a very common workflow. So we want to store the square numbers from 1 till 10 in a list and therefore we create an empty list L. We iterate over the range object uh, from 1 till 10 including. We calculate uh, the square number for each element and call it square and then we append each uh, squared number to the list L. So let's see what we get here. So we get a list with all squared numbers from 1 till 10. And there's also called a concept uh, called uh, list comprehension, which does actually the same job. So we can say here, we create here uh, an spare bracket. So we create a list here. We can say, please for all elements in our range object one till 10, please give us the element to the power of two and please store it in a list. And uh, let's ex execute the cell. And there you can see we get the same result as before. So. We reduced um, three lines or four lines of code to only one line of code with the list comprehension. All right, so let's go on with another case study and uh, let's count all numbers between uh, zero and 10,000 that are divisible by two and five uh, without remainder. So we can say for E in range 10,001, so we want to include 10,000. And if one modulo two is uh, zero, so if one is divisible by two without remainder and one modulo five equals zero, then increase our count by one. So first here at the beginning, we introduced a variable count equals zero and, and for each element in our range object uh, that fulfills here both conditions, we have here an end statement, please increase our count. And there we get 1001 elements uh, that fulfill the condition. So obviously zero fulfills our condition and then 10, 20, 30 until 10,000. So each elements that are yeah, actually divisible by 10. All right, so that's uh, for the time being. In the next session, we will have a look at the key arguments or keywords continue, break and pass. So see you there, bye.